Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome to The Hive. A while ago, I made a video about how to set up the iOS version of the mobile app for Home Assistant. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Android version. Now, most of the functions are the same as the iOS version, but it's still worth taking a look anyway. So let's get started. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I don't have an Android phone. What I do have is Android Studio with an emulated Google Pixel 4 XL. There will be uh, some responsiveness weirdness here during the recording and also you're going to hear some fan noise and I do apologize for that in advance. Now I'm also going to make the assumption that you know how to go about downloading and installing applications on your Android phone from the Google Play Store. For me, I'm just going to install the APK on this uh, emulator uh, and we'll go from there because again, I'm going to assume you know how to install apps onto your phone. I will drop a link to the app in the video description down below and I'll also include a link to where you can get the APK if you're interested in sideloading the app instead of using the App Store. So I'm just going to swipe up from the bottom and I'm going to open up Home Assistant and it's going to ask us to select the instance you would like to connect to. Now, normally you would probably be able to see your Home Assistant instance here if you were on the same network. I believe because I'm on an emulator, there's some weirdness here. I'm going to enter the address manually and I'm going to type in my DuckDNS address here. So click OK on that and we're asked to log in for my two-factor authentication code and we'll go next. Okay, so now we're asked to grant some permission to things. So in order to use location tracking uh, or different connection based on Wi-Fi SSID, we need access to the location. So in your case, you would be granting permission to that and I'll go while using the app and I'll click allow to always run in background. We can also grant permission here, but it's also doing call tracking. I'm not too sure what that's for. There may be something going on there where you can uh, trigger automations based on calls that are coming in or going out. That could be interesting. So we'll just allow those things and we'll click finish. And we now have our home assistant interface and we can scroll through here like with anything the responsiveness is a little bit funky um, in the emulator. So what I'm trying to find here, excellent, we've got dining. So I'm going to uh, click that on and that's turned on dining room one, dining room two. So everything works as we would expect. Uh, and if we click on the three dot stack, we've got edit dashboard and help, which we don't really need the help function there. If we click on the hamburger stack here, we can access our other dashboards and all of the other things that we have inside Home Assistant. So if we really wanted to, we could go to the supervisor and see if we've got any updates to install here and, and trigger those updates. The only thing that is probably going to be different here is if we click on the app configuration and we can take a look here and see things like our home assistant URL, our home network Wi-Fi SSIDs. So we can actually define the SSID that we connect to when we are at home. So I would put in the force. And that's going to help the Home Assistant app to know when you're at home versus when you are away from home. There's some device registration information and we can change the device name if we wanted to here. And we've also got manage sensors so we can see the different sensors that are being passed through to Home Assistant in here, including the SIM cards that are installed in the phone and the pressure sensor that's inside the phone apparently, that's interesting, uh, and the storage sensor. Uh, we can turn on biometric locking if we like there, so just flicking that, uh, biometric sensor is not set up because this is an emulator. 
uh, session timeout so we can define the session timeout when it's going to timeout, whether we want to put the application into full screen or not. Um, we can set up NFC tags in here as well. And we've got a theme, we can go to dark theme, which is perfect. And we've got documentation and the application version here. So as you can see, we're not missing any of the functionality that we would generally expect from a companion app with Home Assistant. And if we wanted to, we could create a custom dashboard specifically for our mobile app and then go into our profile here. And in this drop down here for dashboard, we could pick a different default dashboard for this device so that when we go back out to Home Assistant, if we uh, if we were to close this app and then if I swipe up from the bottom and then go home assistant and it opens up and we have this is our default dashboard that we get access to. So now that we've got home assistant companion set up on our Android device, we'll pop over to home assistant. So if we go to our configuration and we go to our devices, uh, we should be able to search for phone. There we go. So we can see that we've got SDK G phone X86 arm. And there's three instances of this. Uh, and that is purely because I've been playing around and getting this set up. So if we click on that device, we should be able to see here that we've got all of the different entities that have been created by the Home Assistant app. So we've got our presence detection, we have the audio level, we have our battery level in here, uh, whether or not it's charging, how many Bluetooth devices are connected to it. So there's a do not disturb sensor, so we can see whether or not it's in do not disturb mode. We have the last reboot time, which is interesting. So 15 minutes ago, we have the next alarm time. We have phone state, so whether it is on a call or not. We have the pressure sensor and the storage sensor to see what our storage situation is. And so then you could use that information to then go and trigger automations. For example, when the battery charging state goes into charging from not charging, you could take that as a signal that you are going to bed and then start turning off lights in the rest of the house uh, or make some decisions based on that information. So um, just one automation that you could do with the charging state there. If like everyone else, you are currently working from home, you could also then uh, set up maybe an automation that changes the color of a light outside your office when your phone goes from a state of idle to in a call, for example. So there's all sorts of interesting things that you could do with this data. And obviously you've got your location data here. So if you were inside a zone uh, and let me modify the settings on emulator so that we do show as being inside a zone. So, so also inside the manage sensors here, we can turn a whole bunch of additional sensors on things like an audio sensor. Um, so the state of the device's ringer mode as well as other related attributes. Uh, we can also turn on detected activity uh, and we may also need to turn on things like geolocation sensors, uh, etc. So now if I pop back over to Home Assistant, um, you'll see that our demo phone is in the Costco location. And we can use that to then trigger automations. So that's setting up the Home Assistant Android app. I do hope you got something out of this video and it helped you on your home automation journey. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see more of my home automation content, subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon down below while you're at it so that you get notifications when I release new videos. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions through that link will help to make more and better content for you to enjoy. And comments down below help as well to let me know other content that you'd like to see. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I look forward to seeing you next time.
Bye for now.